Why evergreens keep their leaves? One autumn evening, little redbird settled down for one last sleep before flying south for winter. As she slept, a strong gust of wind shook her from her cozy nest in the eaves of the barn. Little redbird tumbled and fell onto the cold, hard ground. Ouch, she cried as she stretched out her wing. I will not be able to fly south with this injured wing. How will I survive the long, harsh winter winds? Surely I will perish. As the sun rose, little redbird spotted the tall, strong trees of the forest. She chirped with relief. One of those trees will make a fine home for the winter. Its leaves will shield me from the wind, and I shall build a new nest on a low, sturdy branch. Gathering her strength, Little Redbird hopped and fluttered onto the forest. The first tree she came upon was a silvery white birch. Beautiful birch tree, she said. I have fallen and injured my wing. May I live in your warm branches until spring returns? My goodness, said the birch. It's hard enough for me to stand against the bitter winds. I can't be bothered trying to keep you safe as well. Now, move along. Little Redbird fluttered on until she came to a large oak tree. Good morning, strong oak tree, Little Redbird called. I have fallen and hurt my wing. May I live in your branches until spring returns? Oh my, exclaimed the oak tree. If I let you stay in my branches, then you might as well ask me for some of my acorns. I work hard to make them, and I can't have you eating them all up. Go away, I have work to do before winter arrives. So little Redbird fluttered on until she came upon a hardy maple tree. Hardy maple tree, little Redbird cried. I have fallen and injured my wing. May I live in your branches until spring returns? No, he replied. I am too busy making sap for maple, maple syrup. I have no time for little birds. Be on your way. Poor little Redbird didn't know what to do. Tears as big as raindrops streamed down her cheeks. Little Redbird, why are you crying? A voice called out. Please come here so I can help you. Little Redbird looked up to see a smiling fir tree. She hopped over to him. Oh, fir tree, little redbird said. I have fallen and hurt my wing. I am looking for a place to keep warm for winter, but I have no place to go. No place to go, he asked. Why, I have plenty of room in my branches if you'd like to stay with me. I will keep you safe and warm. Thank you, cried Little Redbird, but I don't have enough strength to fly up to your branches. Worry no more, he replied. I'm happy to help too, a voice called out. Standing tall beside the fir tree was a beautiful blue spruce. My branches are strong. I will shield you from the cold north wind, he said. How kind of you, replied Little Redbird. I will care for you too, a lovely voice whispered through the pines. I may be small, but I make big juicy berries all winter long, said the juniper tree. My berries will help heal you. So little redbird built a warm nest inside the fir tree's branches and waited for winter's arrival. Not long afterward, the Frost Queen and her son, Jack, were out on an evening stroll through the forest. Mother, may I touch the leaves on every tree in the forest? Jack asked. 
No, Jack, his mother replied. See those three trees, she said as she pointed. They were very kind to one of my precious birds who had injured her wing. They gave her a place to nest, rest, and food to eat. You may touch the leaves on every tree in the forest except for the fir, spruce, and juniper. They may keep their leaves all year round, she replied, and they shall forevermore be called evergreen. So it is said because of their act of kindness, not only do the fir, spruce, and juniper trees get to keep their leaves in the winter, but the redbirds stay all winter long to keep them company. The end.